Hello, and welcome to another episode of Owlbear Soup. Or I guess it's another serving of Owlbear Soup. Why hadn't I yeah, thought another that before? Or now. <laughs> All the stupid What's that? puns. All the stupid puns I've yeah. been trying to dream up. In that one mm -hmm. I missed. All right. That one right there, yeah. <laughs> we, we've had a, we've had some heaping helpings before. Yeah. Um, but, but not yeah, just, just a straight-up serving. serving. This is just a, Yeah, here we are. But but the, the truth of the matter is, it is a heaping uh, helping today. It's a heaping helping serving today. Uh, we have it an really amazing is. guest. <laughs> we have a ton of news. And uh, it's spooky season. So, you know, I, I am season. always happy during spooky season. <laughs> Yeah, yep. right. Yep. Um uh it's a me, a bando. <laughs> uh the <laughs> has 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 nailed it. Uh that is in fact our guest is is one Amy Vorpel. Oh so. my gosh, I'm so excited about that. Yep. There's uh so many good things uh that Amy is up to right now and we're going to get to talk about all of them. Um but first a bit later in the show. Yeah. But first, <laughs> Rich, how well, yeah. tell me about your gaming this week. <laughs> I haven't played any gaming. I mean, uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing. I just uh, spent all day yesterday planning a session zero oh. <laughs> for the the brand new D and D campaign. Uh, have you heard about it? That uh, that I'm going to be running for at oh. least a little bit. For at least a little bit. For for about a year. Yeah. Is what I heard. Well, a, a year of game time. I think uh, I think in the the email I sent out because I I do this every time. Um, I give people an out. You know, like saying that yes, I'll sign up for your D and D campaign that might go on for an unnumbered years that's uh that's too much for me so i always say like we're gonna play for three months and at that point decide if you want to keep playing or we could just stop right there <laughs> and so is this one does this this one have that three month cutoff is that what you're three you're months doing? three I'm months hoping will be that a that year three of game time of game time will get us up to uh maybe level four by the end as i'm trying to plan this out i'm not really sure it kind of depends um but it cool. should be fun it was kind of neat to, to think about expectations mm -hmm. um and this just just what I wanted those to look like, and we talked about those in our in our little meeting, just kind of how how far this is going to get. Like, uh, first level, you know, let's get past that as fast as we can. Let's get to the Absolutely. fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, so I'm taking that in mind. We're we're going to do some of that. That's for sure. Awesome. Um, but yeah, it was very fun. I, I love doing that. I love seeing people talking about D and D. It's not like I ever get to meet on Zoom with a group of people and uh, <laughs> you know talk about D and D. So yeah, that never happens. <laughs> No, it's not my job. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, that was pretty good. I think that was kind of the biggest thing. I was very focused on that, um, making that happen, planning it out. There's a homebrew world and kind of a homebrew. There's some additional design work going on here. So so kind of building that up into something that makes any dang sense for anyone else to listen to me talk about. Yeah, um, and uh, some effort. you are, uh, and I and I know for a fact you are using one of the tools that we talked about on this very show. You are using I Legend am. Keeper. Yeah. I I love Legend Keeper. I really do. Uh, we'll, we may have to take another look at it later on. I think it'll be better if you have access to it because you can see then the um, the Atlas system, which is what I really like about it, right? Yeah. It's the same as Notion. We talked about it a whole bunch, but that Atlas and just the pins and easy clicking around and finding the information you want, mm -hmm. it's going to make the world building part of this so much easier. That's awesome. So, Sweet. I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and I I just played a lot of Destiny, a lot of Team Fight Tactics, a lot of Magic the Magic Arena. I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. a, all right, so I'm trying to build a deck in Magic Arena because yeah. I want to summon Tiamat. More than anything, there's a Tiamat card. I want to summon it. Uh, okay. Um, hold on, Tiamat. I'm guessing, I'm making guesses here. Yeah. Gold five color, all five. All five. Yep. Okay. Good. Yep. Legendary, all five color. Yep. And uh, so so you have to build a deck around that. It's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm working it, on it. It's not it's not going mm -hmm. well so far. Uh, but um, do you have to remain in block? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm all, this? All, yeah, I'm trying okay. to stay standard 2022 20, with it, too, in fact. Mm -hmm. So there's standard. Yeah. So and that's that's something else um, it is is there's a new standard uh, for Magic the Gathering. There is the standard standard, which is the past block as you're you're accustomed standard to it. Squared. Right, uh -huh. you're, you're you're accustomed to, um, and then there is the uh, you know yearly standard, I guess now. So there's a 2022 standard, uh, so right. it's only um, uh, expansions like of the last yearish, right? Um, right, right. Like Forgotten Realms is in there, Strixhaven's in there, 
Um, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. I, too bad. I'm just digging through I, cards, trying to figure out how to make oh, synergies sure. work. It's so fun. Yeah. I, I am such a monster, and I will think about those synergies with just way older sets, like, immediately. It's like, oh, yeah. well, I know there's some sort of prismatic amulet, like, three colorless or four colorless, and you get one of each mana. That should be yeah. easy. Get Tiamat easy out. Thing. Like, yeah. <clears throat> okay, if you don't use that set from six years ago, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, like, I like having more restrictions on my Magic mm -hmm. the Gathering. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, the new standard starts on the 16th. That's good to know. Oh, <clears throat> well, dang. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I totally that totally slipped our news. So uh, thank you, um, <laughs> 54 Aqua Snakes. Man, <laughs> man on the street, person on the street, giving us news. I remember uh, that. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm really enjoying uh, Magic the Gathering as lately. I, I, I like a lot of the new yeah. weird things they're doing. You know, the the missions, which were a few sets back. And then, you know, del delving into Dungeon and Rolling Dice, which was the last section. <laughs> and then in, in, I really like the Strixhaven lessons and all the cool Magecraft stuff they did. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah I'm just, I'm, I'm into magic. I'm in it, but I'm in it to win it. Uh, but I only play online. I don't collect cardboard, which is good because some of the news <laughs> we are going to be talking about today oh, gosh. is going to be referencing cardboard. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I like it. I like hearing yeah. about all the new magic mechanics just because I love seeing all of them. But there's so much to like compete with, I feel mm -hmm. like, right now with uh, the huge like online play competing with stuff like auto chess, like Team Fight Tactics or Hearthstone yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah. Got to make it pretty interesting yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to kind of keep up if that's your, your uh, you know, who you're fighting with now. Yeah, and I think the, the, li <clears throat> the limited range of standard is really going to help. So yeah. I'm pretty excited Fair about enough. that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? News. You want to dive into some news? news? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Why don't you kick us off? Why don't so I, I kick us off? Why don't you kick us off so I can cough up alone? Oh, sure. Well, I uh, I have to tell you, um, there are a number of things I want to talk about today that I was like, this one needs to be the first one we talk about. Um, and uh, I decided to finally settle on what is perfect for me. Perfect, uh, which is that just uh, last week, Star Wars announced that they are going to make a new version of Knights of the Old Republic. I mean, we've got more information about it. It's been a rumor forever and ever, right? But KOTOR mm -hmm. is coming back and not just like some little re-release. Let's port it over to our phones, which I have that and I've played that. But like a ground up remake and yeah. I could not be happier. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited that they're going the remake route instead of the, uh, you know, graphics upgrade or whatever, right? Right. Or the remaster yeah. is the other option. But yeah, I'm excited about it being a remake. Uh, getting a similar story, but with some some uh, interesting changes. So especially right. things that kind of line up with current uh, Star Wars lore. Lore has changed a lot yeah. since then. So Yeah, which is good because I want to be surprised by it. I, I do. But that story, like I, I will never forget those two stories. I love them. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll be done with Mass Effect by then. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't like Mass Effect as much if I hadn't played the KOTOR games, right? Exactly. They just, they built that in the perfect way. I love them so much more than like the uh, the Baldur's Gate games um, for that, like build a party and go off on a wild story. Yeah. It's uh, it's so perfect for me. Yeah, I, I love Baldur's Gate, but I also really love the, these games. <clears throat> the problem I mm -hmm. have with like Baldur's Gate and Baldur's, like the, the newest Baldur's Gate that came out, I haven't played it yet. Uh, because it's, uh, you know, playing on a computer and I work on a computer, so I don't like sitting at a computer to play games. It's, it's Oh, sure, it, sure. It doesn't yeah. line up for me, but. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm excited. I'm There's going to be a moment. It's going to be oh, a yeah. PS5. <laughs> I've already saw it. It's PS5. There it is. That's all I needed. I'm going to need. Here's the moment for me that made those games perfect was the moment. And I think it was in the second one when you build your own lightsaber and they're like, what color crystal do you want in that? And I was like, oh, my gosh, just uh, right. <laughs> just nerding out immediately. Am I going to be a guardian? Am I going to go yellow? It just <laughs> I was all yeah, over the place. It I, went, was. I went with Viridian. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. Bringing this story back, I think, for, for new folks as well. Like it is. Yeah, it is one of those classics. I mean, when I think about old style RPGs on the computer. It is, it is absolutely KOTOR. It's Baldur's Gate and, uh, and Planescape Torment. So those are the three. Yeah. And this is the one that needs to come back out of the three. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time playing, uh, playing, um, uh, Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale I, I enjoyed, which was oh, like sure, sure. the third in that line of Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that one was probably my favorite, but, uh, 
Yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty exciting. <clears throat> I have some yeah. less than exciting news. Um, oh, OK. Yeah. You know, I, I, I came in with a bummer last week. I'll come in with a bummer this week. Um, <clears throat> Asmodi and uh, Luma Imports have announced uh, a price increase on their titles. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's issues with the ports. There's issues with shipping containers. There's issues with everything. So um, the Asmodi USA price increase uh, affects Atomic Mass and Fantasy Flight game titles and will uh, take effect October 1st. So the increase range from $2 per item to $10 per item. So about mm -hmm. a 10 to 20% increase in what it's going to cost for shipping. So, right. yeah, I mean, these things are just going to, 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 to continue to happen and to continue to cascade. It's not, it's not great, yeah. but, you know, that's... that's... <laughs> <God>. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, DJ Regular. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. And so, so, you know, and a lot of these, a lot of these things are stuck in, in Los Angeles and Long Beach even. Right. Uh, so yeah. they're saying that there's record numbers of ships waiting to dock at, in, in, uh, in that area, as well as uh, there's a, yeah, 79 containers in port, 49 waiting, either anchored or drifting. Like there's so many yeah. containers, right. In 30 of the 79 containers, uh, ships, are currently at birth and being unloaded. Wow. That's wild. That's There's wild. Just yeah. So many shipping container ships. All right. Well, right. anyway, yeah. Yeah. So well, no. <laughs> Huge. One of the one of the Kickstarters I'm following, they just sent back a note that they are are planning their production and shipping and it's going to cost them six times what they had planned for during the Kickstarter. And so yeah. Are we? They're having to come up with new products because it was one of their their opening lines and it did really well. And so a, a new product to kind of tide people over for those delays, and then also to raise money to help get the the actual product in. Like it's it's wild stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a. Uh, um, I what was it? I just I, I think the the Resident Evil game got pushed back a little bit. The Resident Evil board game too, like mm -hmm. shipping cardboard. It's all the wild the wild west out there right now. Yeah, and. I mean, in a sense of this, this notwithstanding, it's time, right? I mean, the board game industry is pretty well set on, I would say, 20, 40, 60, 100. 20 is, is a card game, a uh, quick dice game, something small like a roll and write. Uh, 40 kind of in our mass market wheelhouse. 60 is kind of a, um, that's where I see most hobbyist board games. Yeah. And then 100 is premium. And those numbers going up by $10 not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, a big deal, a big deal. Sorry. <laughs> but, but some, somewhere yeah. they should go anyways. So I, I, I'm hopeful that will help them. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, you know, and I, I kind of feel like it's, it's time for those prices to shift to just a little bit anyway. It, you know, it's, it's yeah. been that for a while. You know, I think our standards, I think our standard game should be like 60 bucks or our, our premium gamer mm -hmm. games, you know, 80 and the, yeah. you know, huge like collector games are like 120. Yeah, we fancy. Yeah. We fancy Luna Lily. <laughs> uh, Halloween. Halloween is what I got fancy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll get board games there and then we'll get RPGs there at some point. I yeah. Mean... <laughs> I mean, RPGs have been underpriced since inception. Um, yeah. You know, I, I remember those real cool box sets that we used to get, like the Planescape box. That I have like two or mm -hmm. three of them on my shelf in the other room. Uh, other room in my castle. Uh, <laughs> right. And. Um, they uh <laughs> uh they were like what they were like 20 30 bucks and they were just a constant right. money loss for TSR yeah. um mm -hmm. you know 50 bucks for a for a hardback book that you'll spend a bajillion hours on that's a that's a steal right. like you know it's uh, nice that DM's guild something that we would have paid like three dollars for like you know a few years ago is now looking more like 10 yeah um it's pretty good it's pretty reasonable but those are still like if that <laughs> got pushed forward to you know hardcover D, D products they'd be even cheaper these days so so they yeah mm -hmm. gotta get bigger gotta pay our folks um yeah. I, i'm excited to see those uh increase as well yeah cool that was it Whew. i'm done with that that was it that wasn't too sad. That I mean, that was terrible. It was awful. But also, right. let's look for a brighter future. Yeah. <laughs> what, brighter future where our game designers get paid better. Right, right. Uh, and on that note, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at free RPG Day. <laughs>
<laughs> no. Well, so here's this here's, is here's I love about, free RPG day. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, immediately coming off of like, you know, cost of things, I, I, I think free RPG day is a, is a fantastic example of ways that game companies could be spending money to market their yes. games. And, you know, as a right. marketing professional, I I don't see that as a like a um, a red line item. You know what I mean? Where it's like mm -hmm. it's just a loss because it's not like right. mm -hmm. I know so many people who are into yeah. Starfinder now because of playing Skittermanders at Starfinder free rpg days so exactly anyway, free Absolutely. rpg day tell us about um, it. right if you head to freerpgday.com it is coming in one month it'll be on october 16th uh and basically the way it works is that uh game stores are going to grab all sorts of goodies from a bunch of publishers and we'll be giving them out steadily throughout uh mm -hmm. the day because it's a day i was going to say the weekend yeah <laughs> the day um and uh, some of them are are amazing. Like some of them are, you know, absolutely from Paizo. We're going to be getting, um, actually, you can click on on basically every single one of these and get a brief sneak peek. So um, Paizo is going to be giving out the Starfinder 4 um, and the hard, versus the Hardlight Harlequin. Oh, yeah. Um, and then for, uh, for Pathfinder, uh, the Threshold of Knowledge. And these both look like short adventures, um, usually introductory, so that you can play them with first-level characters, stuff like that. Um, excellent. Thank you for dropping that, uh, that link. Um, it's so cool. It also tells you how much of them there's going to be so that you can kind of compare them. Because mm -hmm. if you show up early, potentially, I mean, game stores can do this any way they want. But if you take a look at, for example, Q Workshop, uh, dice makers they're they're bringing three sets of 3d6s and that's all just three uh in one of these free rpg groups mm -hmm. so stores are going to change their rules i remember going to uh to guardian games in portland and basically after you played a game there or or, or something you would spin a big wheel and that would tell you what your prize was going to be mm -hmm. and it was much more likely for you to get one of these adventures because there's so many of them but every once in a while you get a premium reward um, whether it is 3D6, I think someone else is coming in with, um, oh, I had it on here. I think it's, uh, oh, there it is. Serious Dice is coming with a, a large dice set uh, in a wooden box. So mm -hmm. there's some really cool stuff in here, and you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's always fun to just get something for free, and while you're at the game store, buy something that's not free uh, to support your local game store. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, not only that, it's the free, remember, remember this when you're at the game store. The free stuff isn't from the game companies like it's game company material your friendly right. local game store purchased all of those items to then turn around right. and give for free so make sure and spend some money there like you know mm -hmm. that's i think that's part of the problem with uh what, what happened with free comic book day like it's it's not nearly as uh fun or 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 interesting as as free rpg day can be because it's right. just like so many people would just show up and you know grab whatever free comics they could grab and turn around and resell as opposed right. to, to, to purchasing th anything in the stores. And so, yeah. yeah, I don't know the last couple of years that I've done free RPG day. I didn't do it this year or the year before, but previous they weren't, they yeah. weren't, the, they weren't as fun. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. But I, I totally agree. Make it a plan. Like go to your, I'll be going down to geeky tees on free RPG day, picking yep. something up mm -hmm. and, uh, and buying some more stuff. You know, that'll just be my monthly visit, my monthly yep. purchase day. Yeah. Um, I'll go to one of the guarding <laughs> games locations and pick up some stuff there too. Sorry. Did you say one of, do they have a second location now? Kind oh my of. gosh. They, 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 Portland. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are, uh, so rainy day games is now, it's still rainy day games, but it's owned by guardian. Oh, I didn't realize. That's very cool. Yeah, that's relatively very new. Cool. That's within the last year or so. Good work, then. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's why Angel's out. Where's Angel living now? Angel moved. Anyway. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> anyway, Portland. Portland. Portland Insider News. <laughs> yeah, Portland for the, for the Portlanders. Let's talk about our our game store owners, who we all know by name. Uh, <laughs> oh my um, gosh. Uh, I'll tell you about all the Portland game stores and which ones are doing well still and which ones have closed later all right but uh, in the meantime i'm gonna focus on the closed because i'm the cooler and i have to take away all the fun <laughs> uh, oh excellent yeah i've got nothing but fun coming so get ready. <laughs> <laughs> no uh so my next my next bit of news let's let's talk about this uh D D is which like heroes and villains battle it out and gale force nine's new collector series miniature box set i you know people people like i i recognize how hard it is to write headlines and sub headline you know sub headlines so sometimes i want to 
been flecked it a little bit more, but this is a, a very <laughs> interesting product. Uh, it is two bo- two separate boxes. Uh, there are the um, Collector Series, the uh, Wild Witch Lot League of Malevolence, and the Valor's Call. So these are just more mm. really sweet, sweet miniatures that you can get for D&D. Um, they are not pre-painted. You're going to have to paint them yourself. And I love right. them. Uh, it's it's essentially a party in a box, and I love that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That's it. This is pretty incredible because uh, I mean, these are not just the minis, right? But mm-hmm. uh, but the game itself, we've seen previews have these characters, and you will see mm-hmm. the stat blocks for them. So uh, the uh, the Valor's Call is being led by Strongheart the Paladin. I already know what their abilities are like. Um, which is very cool. Um, and for the League of Malevolence, you've got Kellic there, uh, mm-hmm. War Duke, Zargash, some other folks. So it's these are all people that uh, that we are going to know, uh, which I think is very cool. Not just randoms, but yeah, yeah. These these are know. named characters out of uh, you know the uh, Wild Beyond Witchlight yeah. book. Um, that book's coming out uh, very shortly. I think uh, on the twenty first is what I checked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of jump on it and talk about my next bit just because it ties in so well. Um, They've also recently released uh, the Wild Beyond Witchlight accessories. Those have been detailed. So Mm -hmm. we now have information about what uh, the Dungeon Master screen uh, is going to be like 15 bucks. And then there's going to be, which I love. I love the map sets. Uh, So the map set is going to include five match maps, which will guide the uh, party through the Prismir and the Witchlight Carnival. So, um, you know, they're they're very Mm -hmm. nice, high quality vinyl maps so that you can sit there and mark on them. And um, that set is going to be about 30 bucks. So that's amazing. These these maps are incredible. They're some of my favorites that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So I really want to check them out. This does Uh, include the maps for Hither, Thither and Yawn. Hither. Uh, somebody pitched that, and I'm so happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> somebody had to say, this is what we're going to call the realm. We're going to split it up into these three. Hither, thither, and yon. And uh, <laughs> everyone was excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm into um, it. I, I also have some Witchlight news, actually. Because oh, wow. um, I've been keeping an eye on some previews, right? And mm-hmm. so one of the ones that has come from D&D Beyond, uh, a little fitting for our guest a little bit later, is uh, the Jabberwock that they have put up uh, on D&D Beyond. There's a whole article talking about um, not just the Jabberwock and kind of their stat block, but lore about them, how their lore um, and the lore from Lewis Carroll has kind of influenced the abilities that we have on there. Like the Jabberwock burbles to itself constantly with this confusing burble that will confuse you if you get within 20 feet of it, things like that. Um, Or of course, the part of um, the... uh, (laughs) The part of the poem that we all know where uh, the Jabberwock is laser beam eyes. Um, no, they just got a fiery gaze <laughs> attack. It's very cool. It's challenge rating 13. Uh, it's a monster that's going to make kind of a mess yeah. uh, against a party out to fight them. Um, the confusing burble is like a charisma save DC 18. So pretty tough. Um, confuse is such an awful effect. So I love it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, regeneration, um, multi-attack, multiple rends, this fiery gaze, and lots of legendary actions. Um, and there's also the uh, a little bit about the Mist Mash Wood, uh, which is a place that you can house the Jabberwock, kind of hiding in here with some other ideas about what else you could fit into a little adventure featuring uh, our new best friend. <laughs> I so am check that out on D&D Beyond. <laughs> I'm very excited to throw that at some players. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know I mean, I'm going to do it. I mean, this, this yeah. is now the end of my next campaign. <laughs> yeah wait uh <laughs> i um i love miniatures i love being able to put out miniatures either that goes goes one once one way or the other right so whenever i'm playing a game either it's all uh star wars minis or it's all like mm-hmm. really exact matching minis that really make the scene and something that has a, a series of, of product that has been coming out is is the epic encounters uh from steamforge games yeah. i love those I they're, didn't get that. they're gorgeous <laughs> oh hey shut up Siri. and uh you just bought all those <laughs> thanks siri <laughs> whoops whoops no no that's that's the a word i don't say that oh no order okay things. yeah siri doesn't write things good. she sends text messages <laughs> aubrey's getting a weird text message right now um yeah so so they're releasing two new box sets of epic encounters one is the undead horde so there's skeletons mm-hmm. specters shamblers um uh there's human captives um Ooh. there so the game box comes with 20 um 
huge, highly detailed miniatures. They're unpainted, a double-sided game mat, an adventure book, monster stats, tips and tricks for building the tension and excitement. And this is 50 bucks. 50 bucks for wow. 20 great miniatures. I'm into it. So, but I'm looking at a few of them and they look very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so arena of undead horde. Uh, and then also let's not forget, they usually put these out two at a time. So that means there's also epic counters or encounters, uh, tower of the lich empress. I love that. This one, um, will come with, uh, <laughs> this game box, uh, comes with a huge, highly detailed miniature, uh, uh, four detachable skull spell effects, double-sided game mat, an adventure book, monster sap, tips and tricks. So uh, this one looks like it's more of a singular wow. encounter, but it's kind of a boss uh -huh. encounter. And looking at the, the 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 minis, totally go check them out. That mini is boss. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's incredible. Like as soon as you said those skulls, like knowing those are detachable and they can move forward off this like ridiculous base that looks like like a hand clutching yeah. um, this pedestal that the Lich Queen is on. It looks amazing. Like I, that's I, I kind of that's wonder, cool. <laughs> I, 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 I hope those uh, detachable skulls kind of stand on their own because that would be mm -hmm. rad to be able to have them flying around the right. battlefield. Um, which I'm assuming yeah. that's what it is based on. If you look at the non-painted picture, it kind of looks like that. So. Right. Uh, that's fantastic. I, I can't wait to see that. And I'm, um, I want to build an encounter around that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll have their own, but like, <laughs> oh, I already, want that now. I'm already coming up with ideas. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. That is fantastic. Um, well, uh, well, my new bit of news is, uh, is moving aside from minis. Um, Maybe this will give you some ideas as well, though. Um, I just want to check in real quick and let you know that uh, Team Dragonlance is back. Um, Tracy and Laura Hickman are creating their first adventure world since Dragonlance, which came out in second edition. So, I mean, I was reading those books when I was in middle school. Um, but they've moved on to something new. Uh, the Sky Raiders of Abarax. Um, right now, there's not a lot of information, right? They've put a bunch of art up in different places. Um, we see a group of folks. Uh, definitely, we're talking uh, airships, dragons, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of tech, some navigation stuff here going on with their magic. And uh, I have no idea what this game is going to be, uh, except that they're calling it Sky High Fantasy, which they should. I mean, that's just smart. Um, the other thing they're they're mentioning, and this is something that I've been paying attention to recently in RPGs, um, join us in the creation of Sky High Fantasy discovered through magical books brought to life with our unique living tome system. And I'm very curious what that means, whether that's going to be they're taking 5th Ed and moving it to a character journal of some kind, like some way to influence how your character works. Maybe this is going to be like a playbook, like a Powered by the Apocalypse style. Uh, I have no idea, and I'm very curious to learn what that means down the road. <laughs> Yeah. Right now, it's basically just a promotion and a mailing list. But uh, I mean, Dragonlance is incredible. So I'm excited to see what they've got. Nice. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up reading very much Dragonlance. Um, I, so I, I don't know Ugh. what I'm missing. I've only seen. I, do you remember there was an animated Dragonlance cartoon? Like it was like a cartoon movie or something? I believe so. Yeah, I, I, that's my exposure to Dragonlance. That's all I've watched. <laughs> It's, it's hard because the, the covers are so thematic that uh, I've seen so many of the covers. I'm like, have I seen stills of the show or I just looked at the covers a lot? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but it's very cool. Dragonlance, like formative, formative. That was, I read, I think the first books that I read kind of in fantasy were probably Dragonlance and then also Lone Wolf, I think was the, the game book that you played while you read. You had like a character sheet that went with it. Um, I had to take those back to the, the library and then I just check them right back out again. <laughs> Streams of silver is what uh, brought me into fantasy. Streams of silver. The the uh, the, the the kickoff book for the um, Dritz Wolfgar. Yep. All them yep. crazy kids. So and, and you know and, and, and it's interesting like uh, comparing our gaming and our our DMing and our, our storytelling styles too. You can kind of see that a little bit, right? You know, uh, yeah. Dragonlance is a little more high fantasy. And Forgotten Realms. That's what I like. And Forgotten Realms is a little <laughs> more. It's not super gritty. It's a little more gritty, though. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Forgotten Realms is kind of set up with the idea that you are not going to change the world by what you do, but you might change your region. Mm -hmm. And Dragonlance, no, no, no. You're changing the world. Exactly. It's what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And that's the, uh, yeah. Good you point. Know, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a whole other world that needs a little change, and that world is Dune. So uh, there's a new game 
It's available for pre-order from Portal Games. It's called Dune House Secrets. Uh, this game is a yes. takes about 90 to 180 minutes to play, so right in that range that I like. Uh, one to four players, and it's a uh, cooperative story uh, 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 story game, or sorry, story driven game in set in the world of Dune. So, uh, yeah, no, it looks really nice. I've I've been looking at some of the pictures, looking at some of the um, various pieces that come with it. It looks like a really mm -hmm. cool game. Um, you can uh, I, I cool. like. I like their their title. Join the resistance against House Harkonnen. Um, yeah, you don't get to play them. Just period. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Banning that. <laughs> no. Against. Yeah. Them. They're going down. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, some of the key points that I, I like. I like it when games focus things like this. So some key points. It's a unique, immersive experience set in the world of Dune. Marketing copy. Mm -hmm. uh, easy introduction to the game. Thanks to the prologue teaching you all, uh, you, you know, teaching you all the rules. I like that. Uh, three chapters yeah. filled with unique encounters, unexpected story twists, uh, exciting secret rebel tasks, which is, I That's love awesome. secret tasks. <laughs> Develop your character yeah. using experience points gathered during gameplay and a game mechanic based on an award-winning detective, a modern crime board game. A game I, for whatever reason, have still not played. And that, um, that's weird to me. Maybe, maybe this will get me there. Yeah, yeah that's weird to me. Because, uh, yeah, there's Detective, a modern war game. And then there's Detective Season 1. And then yeah. there's a, a set of Detective, a, a, you know, modern crimes. And those take place in L.A. Uh, then there's the Petty Officer. There's so much there for you, Rich. This is, I know, I know. This is, this is where you should be getting all your games. They're all I actually say that out loud. Yeah, I should. I should. Well, um, <laughs> portal games, get in touch. Give me everything. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to track all those down. They've got a whole bundle. I might have to pick that up at some point. Uh, now that we're back to playing games again. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got a little bit of weird news. Uh, I don't know. Do you like uh, like comics or something? Never heard of them. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> earlier this uh, this week, I think uh, just a couple days ago, um, there is a new winner, record winner, for the highest priced uh, comic book to go in auction. Um, we're talking at this point about... Um, do, do, do. Um, excuse me. I just lost the number. Um, 3,600,000. Um, what comic is it? Who is the superhero at the center of this auction? Um, I mean, do, do you really want me to tell you? Because I, I know. Like I, I, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, if there was one person to dethrone Superman, it was going to be this this particular uh, comic. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. um, I think it deserves it. Uh, I, I would, yeah. I, I would love to see action comics or detective comics back on top, but um, it's a uh, weird tales, I believe, uh, where we get first introduced to one Spider Man. Amazing tales. Yeah, so, amazing yeah. fantasy. Amazing fantasy. Boom. Yeah. It is the issue with the origin of Spider-Man, so you will see uh, the first appearance of Uncle Ben and Aunt May as well. So it's the whole story right there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I kind of, I mean, it's very telling for comics now that Spider-Man is is in the lead. Um, yeah. And since the the buyer immediately took it from three point six and said it's it's still on sale, you know, we can talk, but it's going to be five point four million. Means uh, it uh, it may re retain the top spot for some time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and that's that's. Uh... I, I think with the everything we've seen from Marvel movies, but really specifically like the most recent Spider-Man movies, the the yeah. fact that we're all we all grew up watching Amazing Spider-Man on you know Fox on Saturday mornings, like mm -hmm. you know the it's it's the right time for for Spider-Man to overtake that, and uh, yeah no I, I I probably would have guessed that even had I not known, just because yeah, yeah. trends in comics right. Yeah, I, you know, so. I like it much more than having a Wolverine comic up front. Um, I'll say that <laughs> as uh, the Cyclops fan over here. But Spider-Man, I think, yeah, hits yeah. On, on many, many, many modern levels. So, yeah, I've been reading. So I was always a DC guy and I've, I, and I've talked about this a little bit. And I've been reading through all of the X-Men comics. So, but oh, yeah. uh, when, when Cl Chris Claremont came on. So the X-Men we know and love, the new X-Men. Mm -hmm. Um and Wolverine is a much more deep character than I ever thought he was. And same with Scott, you know, Cyclops. Uh, they just have so many more levels that I never saw from the movies or from from, from sure, the yeah. cartoons. It's, it makes them really interesting. It's interesting to see like, oh, yeah, yeah, 
no, no, no. They've they they have pasts. They have issues. They're yeah, it's cool. Right. It's been a ton mm -hmm. of fun. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm gonna have to get back into that because yeah, the movies movies left it sour. I want to get back to the comics. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well. What else you got? I've got, oh. I've got, of course, a couple Kickstarters. I want to do like kind of quick fire, but uh, what else do you got? Uh, I have, I'm, I have uh, one more piece of uh, news. And so <laughs> talking about Gen Con, let's talk about Gen Con a little okay. bit, you know, uh, and this is not something I've seen from all of the, the publishers. Honestly, like the, the first one I saw this pop up for was uh, uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Everybody's going to be streaming. Uh, there's going to be a lot of streaming mm -hmm. going on. Uh, so Fantasy Flight Games, since they're not there, they're going to be doing some streaming. So on Wednesday, uh, September 15th, starting at uh, 7 uh, Central, uh, they are going to have the in-flight report where uh, Chris Gerber, the head of the studio, is going to giving be giving a look at upcoming games and new announcements. Uh, also, uh, on Thursday, September 16th, uh, they are going to be uh, talking about Lords of the Ring, or Lord of the Rings, the journey to Middle-earth. Um, so it's going to be gameplay previews, talking with the developers, talking about the newest expansion, um, you know, a, a special showcase on heroes, roles and stuff. And then on Friday, September 17th, a Game of Thrones betwixt gameplay preview. So you get to hang out with designer Frank uh, Brooks and other members of the creative team as they play through the all new game based on the characters in uh, uh, Song of Ice and Fire. And then lastly, Very nice. Saturday, September 18th, Unfathomable Big Game. Tune in for an exciting six-player game of Unfathomable with several members of FFG's staff. Uh, try to guess who are humans, who are hybrids, and who the cultist is in this thrilling showcase of the game's characters and mechanics. So, yeah, that should be fun. Uh, that's, nice. that's pretty exciting. And, you know, to tie into that, uh, we will, in fact, be live here on the Saving Throw Show on our saving throw show, Albert Soup, next week with a couple of special guests where we will be doing design, we're designing an adventure with chat. So you all know what that is. So make sure you come hang out mm -hmm. and uh, make that a good time. Um, yeah. yeah and, and I'm really check, excited for that. Also check all the other saving throw shows that are doing something special for Gen Con. If you check yeah. in the old chat Rooney, boom, <laughs> you know, I need to yeah. adjust this. I'm pretty excited. We've got uh, we've got Megan Caves doing uh, Mysterium, the RPG. Mysterium is one of the board games that I, I really like. Right, one of the players is a ghost trying to tell you secret messages, and you're trying to see how well you can figure those messages out. It's a very fun game. Yeah. I'm excited to see it get used uh, with the Savage Worlds rules to turn into a role playing game. I wonder if it means uh, Megan won't be able to talk throughout. That, that that's not going to be true. There's no way, <laughs> right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And of course, we've got Dom doing uh, producing live streamed RPG actual plays, talking about ev all the work that he does here on Saving Throw and how uh, you know you can learn about that, learn how to do it yourself. Who knows? Check it out. Yeah. Um, those are going to be fantastic shows. Great. All right. Cool. Well, that was news. My news. <laughs> I got one Kickstarter I want to mention. We've got two, but one of them we're going to talk about in a little bit. But the other one is, of course, we should, you know, definitely mention that right now, if you check Kickstarter and look up um, this uh, this band called the Double Clicks, uh, you will find their Kickstarter right now. Um, it's kind of a cool moment. Not only are they um, uh, <laughs> creating this awesome Velociraptor plush, which is in a different room where I'd show you right now. Um, but also it's going to create a, uh, the 10 year anniversary, uh, best of album. So definitely if you're a fan of the double clicks, check out that Kickstarter. And if you're not a fan, you should check out that Kickstarter. I mean, there's <laughs> something for, uh, do it. No. <laughs> so, uh, please, please. I, um, oh, I can't, I can't post links in there. Um, <laughs> and uh so yeah so one of one of the things is is to to know is i heard overheard a phone conversation where they were talking about uh you know some 2000 velociraptors being shipped <laughs> uh i don't want all of those in 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 my in my house uh, uh and i don't know that you have room in your house so let's uh, i, I you know, it'll be <laughs> close. Fill some space. Be, well, I mean, they're green, so you could just put them, pile them behind you, and nobody will tell, be able to tell. That is true. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so please buy them. No, they're adorable. They're absolutely. Great. They're going to have no Check problem selling Twitter. them all. So, yeah, so good. Cool. Uh, and, um, well, should we go ahead and jump into our review, and then we'll talk about the next Kickstarter soon? 
Right, exactly. Um, I was just going to say that you can also check out the Double Clicks and Friends. There's going to be a whole nerd music thing going on at um, Gen Con as well. Uh, and it will also feature someone we're going to talk to in just a little bit. So, <laughs> Mega Ren? That too. <laughs> so many people. So many people. Um, check that out. That is going to be the uh, the Friday night show. Um, all right. Which should be a lot of fun. All right. All right. Well, all right, all right. Yes, review. Um. Uh, let's see, earlier this week, I believe, uh, Arcadia number six came out. We've looked at a couple of these. Uh, gosh, I love this magazine. I mean, yeah, like, we, we've right. talked about Dragon in the past, which was not something that I I, uh, I looked at, but holy cow, Arcadia, like, gives me shivers when I take a look at this book. Um, and this one is for DMs in particular. So I just wanted to, to show you two of the articles in here to talk about these and some of the ways that you can incorporate these ideas into your own campaign. Ooh, um, oh my gosh! First off, of course, Arcadia is is beautiful. The most mm -hmm. beautiful D and D product. I, I oh gosh, it's good. So good. <laughs> um, right. Where would we like to start? We're gonna start with the Grim Accord, and this is by one Michael Shea. Oh, um, I love Michael Shea. Ah, thank you very much for posting that Kickstarter in uh there in the chat. Um, right, uh, Michael Shea or Sly Flourish. Um. Uh, wanted to go ahead and create something that I love. I love this. I mean, it's really, really difficult to create a rival team of adventurers. Um, and that's exactly what we've got here. A team of four evil adventurers skulking in the shadows of your heroes. The Grim Accord are designed to be these, these, uh, these villains that may show up all at the same time. They may show up at separate times. Hopefully they have created plans that will mess with you throughout your adventure. Um, and all four of them have uh, not just a stat block that would be um, that would be good. I mean, of course, they have the stat block, but also a lot of information about like their nicknames, kind of the things they do, their background, their ideal, their bond, their flaw, their tactics, like exactly what they are going to look like in combat and do. Um, it just it makes them sound really, really um, like they're gonna mess you up. <laughs> And I love it. The four of them are really, really thematic. Um, uh, we've got Iray, Fire Touch, this Halfling Sorcerer of Flames. All of them, with an ability that I know that you would like, Justin, um, each of them has a death ability yes. of some kind. I love right? death ability. They hit zero, they don't die. Like, or something happens. Um, they're all different. They're all interesting. Um, and all of these are going to make for really, really wild fights. Oh, man. No, I, I love, <laughs> I love, I love, I love, uh, abilities that are triggered based on hit point levels so mm -hmm. you know i love bloodied uh i loved bloodied in fourth edition although i don't say bloodied right. in fifth edition because it doesn't exist but i do whenever i right. design uh homebrew <laughs> characters a lot of times i'll put a 50 percent on there at 50 percent, this happens right right um and and, and i and love that, that will effect. be true here yeah i love mm -hmm. that effect and then i one of my favorite creatures in um fourth edition were these um were orcs these orcs that whenever they hit zero they would then just charge someone and attack yeah you know? right it's like that's yeah that, that was their that was their zero thing it was like <laughs> hit zero boom i'm gonna yeah. go charge someone i love throwing those at people and those are the best and then they collapse and i got in but yeah <laughs> oh yeah um i got in trouble uh, last uh year during the academy because i kept having exploders like when it hits zero it explodes yeah. um and they kids got used to it so they were like oh, i'm attacking that thing at ranged i don't know it looks scary <laughs> yeah yeah that's when so you, but that's, i like the charge the that's charge good. is great <laughs> the, like make the charge or you know and and we were just talking about like in um the characters here and you know and we'll preview one of these because i've, I've already read it so when uh ira fire touch passes when they hit zero hit points, flame arcs out of her body towards her enemies. Each enemy within 20 feet must make a deck saving throw or take, you know, fire damage. You know, right. There you go. You're you're already like dealing with those range. So so your students will never feel mm -hmm. safe. Right. <laughs> um, and if we go go farther, like after the four awesome stat blocks, these are great characters. Uh, there's a little bit about the group tactics of the Grim Accord, and it mentions things like these are ruthless enemies. While on the offensive, they don't play fair. They don't attack the characters. They'll go after uh, their friends. Mm -hmm. um, they'll just set them on fire. They'll just yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, that will draw your enemies in, and they will just prepare for the ambush at that point. Um, 
there's a there's a whole you know section on just how they're going to be mean um there is a little bit more about tying them into the backgrounds of your characters uh so that they fit the plot a little bit more villainous quests and adventure hooks uh, a little bit about the stormborn tower their lair um and if we take that lair we can talk about it as well, since this is MCDM, uh, we can talk about it in terms of kingdoms and followers, right? There's information ways to to use that. We've got um, we've got the uh, the warfare unit card that you could use if this group was uh, was amongst your army. Um, a little bit of information about their organization and the special powers that they have. So it is this is like a whole section that is incredible. There's something there for you to use to put these cool creatures and characters into your campaign. Um, and the other one. Um, is awesome as well. This is, I love armor sets. I love magic item sets. Um, this is the armor of Zevalon. It is split into uh, five, four pieces. Um, a number of pieces. A there we go. Um, and, uh, and there's two important things about these. I mean, first of all, when you look at them, they look gleaming and bright. This is by Gabe Hicks, by the way, and it's fantastic. Um, this is the armor of, of a demigod who has fallen, and uh, the demigod is not a nice person. And so you might look at these items and be like, "What this shining broadsword? How fantastic!" Oh, when uh, when I use or this uh, this gauntlet, whatever. When I hold it, I can summon. There we go. This green flame blade that kind of whispers at me. Oh, that's a little eerie. Does a bunch of fire damage or necrotic damage. Well, it's weird that that's good. Okay. Um, you put it on, you cannot take it off. Um, so it feels a little cursed. You want to find the other ones. Um, and uh, as you gather these four items, um, they don't take attunement slots. So you can be the person with all four of them, which is what you want to be. And at that moment, that's when the trick falls, right? There's a whole section in here about what happens when you complete it. Um, this uh, this person is going to talk to you. And, and do you accept? Do you like break away? Uh, what are you going to do then? There's options for that. There's also a whole adventure um, designed to introduce these to your storyline and give you the first piece in the set. So um, very, very cool stuff here, I think, uh, for DMs to think about and incorporate into their games. Yeah, that's good. And there's this whole section on spelunking, but uh, <laughs> we're going to yeah. leave that for another time. Another yeah. cool adventure. Yeah, I just want to pop over here. Yeah, so, you know, Gabe Hicks, amazing author. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael Shea, amazing author. I'm unfamiliar with H.H. H. Carlin, but I really did enjoy the spelunking adventure. So fantastic, it is cool. <laughs> fantastic choice there. That's that's great. Um, yeah, there's mm. just this is just a great issue um, for even for my my home campaign that I'm in the process of writing as well. Uh, there's mm -hmm. there's a few things, you know, the the um, specifically uh, this bit really was the this grim accord. I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, that's great. Specifically for, <laughs> for the campaign that I'm I'm writing. <laughs> have I have I told you the name of the uh, the group of rivals that I put into many of my campaigns? No, it is. They are the Lonely Hearts Club band. Um, <laughs> they all are like I, I name them the the uh, the King of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, the Jack of Hearts, the numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, I go into it. <laughs> that was in my last campaign. It won't show up in this one. You're yeah. angry. You're the punster. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I love the puns. I just... Uh, <laughs> I want to be the one who's coming up with the puns. <laughs> what did I... I think once I called them the Lonely Hearts Club slash band. Uh, they couldn't decide if they were a club or a band, but they were the Lonely Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Arcadia, well, check it out. Uh, it is what? I think it is seven ninety nine on the MCDM store. Nice, nice. Yeah, totally go grab that. And um, I don't know, Rich, you ready for that? for that last to announce that last kickstarter we're going to talk about oh yes yes indeed absolutely we got to talk all about um uh, a new a new kickstarter <laughs> by uh, an up-and-comer uh one amy <laughs> vorpal <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've heard of her <laughs> hello, hello amy. amy and welcome welcome to saving throw <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm I'm here, there and I have unmuted myself. Hi. 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 I think it, you were all joking that I'm an up and comer, but I actually uh, still feel like I actually am an up and comer. So, egg on your face. <laughs> Look, I will do this too. Oh Yay. yes. <laughs> Gotta get the look. Your promo pictures have been amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I put so much 
I, I months months of work went into those promo pictures including getting mm -hmm. i got the the gown is an original design <laughs> that um i hired a costume designer to to design for me and then obviously the photos but anyway yes thank you very much yeah. <laughs> they're my be, the besides the album the promo pictures are my favorite part of this whole kickstarter thing <laughs> <laughs> Well, we teased it a little. Oh tell us, tell, tell, tell the folks who know nothing about your Kickstarter a little bit about your Kickstarter. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. I it is my second solo music album, and if you're because you're watching this on Saving Throw Show, you might know that my first solo music album is called Songs in the Key of D and D, and it is definitely, definitely intertwined in the Saving Throw Show um, full history because. That one, that album is based on songs that I wrote. I wrote a new song every stream and ju just for fun, sometimes they were inside jokes. Obviously the DM's Lament was um, more of a generic kind of tale about Dungeon Masters. And then I just recorded them all and Maxi put them all together on an album and it was kind of the 10 best. And so, yeah, I, I got my whole songwriting career started with Saving Throw Show. Uh, but behold her dreams. Behold her dreams is this is what I'm kickstarting now. It's um, it's just an amalgamation of stuff that came into my brain during quarantine. They're all songs. Some of them are D and D songs. Some of them are love songs. Some of them are creepy lullabies. And I think one of them will be um, if it makes the cut. It'll just be a tale of insecurity. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's just uh, it's really cool music. It was fully funded in twelve hours. And I, I yeah. give lots of props to Laser, who I took their uh, Laser Campaigns kickstarting crowdfunding class. And just they just helped. Oh, my gosh. They helped so much. So a um, <laughs> lot, of, lot of props on what to expect. And, um, and just, yeah, my success is pretty much mm -hmm. just due to Laser. So. <laughs> right. But I still have stretch it's, goals. So, so if you're if you do want to if you do want to back it, there's still a lot of room for you to back the album. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, it's. Uh, I mean, we've Kickstarter has been around for so long. We've talked about so many of them, um, and it doesn't matter at all because the first time you do one is this moment of pure terror. <laughs> and so having having guidance and help for that is always fantastic. But I mean, yes. people are backing it because you have made something incredible here. So, uh, yes. so congratulations on all this success. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, thank yeah. you. I do feel very. Uh, Laser and I were texting on the day, and and I was like, Laser, I I am starting to feel weirdly bad, and they were like, You're feeling too much love, and I'm like, I think I'm feeling too much love, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I my body is not prepared for the mm -hmm. love, and so it's like overflowing, and I'm like, I cannot I cannot contain this much love. So I say it feels bad, but it it's more uncomfortable than bad, and. and mm -hmm. I just guess I had to get really comfortable with feeling a lot of love. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have eleven days left. Uh, there's currently no. It went by so yeah. quickly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. four hundred sixty-seven backers, seventeen thousand raised so far. So good. Doing so good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we mentioned it earlier, but I, I hope the campaign also gets a uh, a quick Gen Con bump because uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be playing in the Nerd Music concert, right? <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, the Double Clicks are putting on their robot musical, and they've mm -hmm. invited some of their friends, including me, to also sing yeah. and play play uh, music. So I'll be doing three songs. Um, and they will be from the new album. Although I Ooh. might just throw in, I might just throw in the DM's Lament because it's just the crowd favorite. And I'm, I, mm -hmm. you got to give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very fair. That is cool. So that's going to be Friday night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Definitely check it out. Um, yes. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Um, because uh, we've been talking about you for some time. I don't know if you know, um, because you've done so many incredible things lately, not just yeah. this Kickstarter, which is awesome. And everyone should go back it right now. Um, but uh, but you have uh, recently been part of one of the D&D collections, uh, the Candlekeep Mysteries, and uh, and are part of a, an upcoming book as well, uh, which inspired, I believe, this hat. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> you sure did. Yeah. Uh, you get to be... You get to be Fizzman. <laughs> I do get to be Fizzman. So yes, they. So Wizards of the Coast um, 
year uh, now it's been years i can legit say it's been years um it was before covid um so it's probably a decade ago uh, no it was it's about it two like. years yeah. ago yes <laughs> they they reached out and um i i got i got pinged to write the candle keep mysteries and that went really well and uh i yeah i was like blown away and um, definitely feel like, uh, definitely felt like a nerd princess or some version of nerd royalty. Like, ah, yes, like I'm going to write an adventure for Wizards of the Coast. It's kind of a dream come mm -hmm. true. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then my adventure for that is called Candlekeep Deconstruction, and it is arguably the silliest adventure in the whole book. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and from there, I know, I know this is how that happened. Uh, James Wyatt is the project director for Fizbin's Treasury of Dragons. And like Tasha's Cauldron or Volo's Guide to Monsters, they wanted to have like a Fizbin kind of sticky notes throughout the book that add some flavor to the crunchy stats. And they wanted mm -hmm. a Fizbin voice. And um, he, he asked Chris Perkins if he could recommend someone. And Chris Perkins said, well, Amy's pretty silly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Fizbin yeah. is a doddering professor type, very mm -hmm. like, he cares he cares way too much about some things and he does not care at all about the things that you would expect him to care about so it's very he's he's just silly um he died by trying to cast feather fall and instead or this is the lore like instead just um mm -hmm. trying to make a pillow of feathers or he cast the wrong spell and instead of feather fall he just made feathers and <laughs> that didn't break his fall at all so right. it's uh he's just silly he's just a silly dude mm -hmm. but he actually actually yeah. got some wisdom and uh, i had a really really fun time writing the quips for him yeah <laughs> those are some yeah. of my favorite parts of the new book so i'm very much looking mm -hmm. forward to this i know i <laughs> we mentioned earlier i know very little about fizban because i very, know very little about dragonlance um, and yeah, I'm just super excited to, to dive into this and, and learn more about this amazing goofy character. Um, yes. Yeah. Goofy is a, goofy is a good word to describe him. And what's weird. Okay. So what a little insight is that it was difficult. It was difficult at first to come to an agreement on like how I would write this guy because he, one of his main um, characteristics is forgetful. And you can't have a forgetful argue, like he's also, is he Bahamut? Yes, he is. You know, like he created all the <laughs> dragons and, and the world itself. So how do you have a, cre how do you have a forgetful guy who made, who made the world uh, comment on things that he may or may not find important. And it's like, oh, that's just too many layers. So instead of going, uh, I forgot what even is a dragon, we landed on, <laughs> like I, I was able to kind of uh, massage the character a little bit and come up with my version mm -hmm. of that, which is more like, yeah, a doddering professor who enjoys um, cream puffs and sweets and food um, and uses, I, one of the things, again, I have no idea what's going to make it into the book and, and they definitely have license to change some of my quips, but one, one of the things that I remember, or one of the quips that, uh, I, I pitched was like, he used his, his favorite memory of a Hydra was them was using the Hydra to try to sing a barbershop quartet. And, and just like that kind of thing, like Hydras are great because they, they all harmonize together really well. It's like, really, that's what, that's why Hydras are great. So that kind of vibe of just like, well, mm -hmm. uh, okay, Fizzman, you've got just a weird little, like an adorable take on monsters, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I like that. That feels, uh, very interesting and also different than the last two characters in, in some very cool ways. So yeah. I'm excited to, yes, they to were get very, that perspective. They were very clear that Tasha is funny because she's sardonic and sarcastic and right. a little bit cynical. And they wanted to very much veer away from that and just have kind of a joyful, delightful, mm -hmm. um, silly guy that, that, you know, like the picture of him with his like, mm, and his canary, he's yeah. just, he's just like, like that. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm taking notes. How do you spell? How do you spell that? Vowel. Vowel. Just lots of vowel, vowels. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's oh good. my gosh. I love that. That is incredible. Um, and I love that that all came from Candlekeep Deconstruction because that is, I, I think you're right. I mean, I love it because it is so, such an unexpected adventure. Like you mentioned it as the the silliest one. And in 
Oh, it's wild. <laughs> I love. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, wow. It, it, when they when they reached out and were asking for mysteries, they were very clear. Like, right, tell it, pitch the thing that you would want to play. Uh, pitch mm -hmm. what you think would be fun. Um, it can uh, happen within Candlekeep or somewhere uh, outside of Candlekeep. It just has to be a mystery. And there there was a part of me that was just like, well the description and the whole forgotten realms of it all of the candle keep was just so like juicy. And I really, my instinct was just to kind of mess with that and screw with yeah. it. And I, I definitely did. And I never got told no. Um, <laughs> but they also, they also said that I was able to um, mess around with genre. Like I didn't have to stay high fantasy um, mm -hmm. which no one did. Everyone just kind of did their own thing with the genre, I yeah. guess. Uh, but I definitely went a little sci-fi, a little bit sci-fi, <laughs> a little bit, just a little, little. <laughs> which, uh, which is, yeah. which is, you know, in line with D and D's history. You should have a little bit of sci-fi in your fantasy, right? Yeah, yeah. there's, I mean, um, spell jammers. That's what I say mm -hmm. is like, uh, a, it's it's a wonderful way if you if you really want to play spell jammers you could use my adventure to get you from D and D into spell jammers or from yeah right. into, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was yeah. I was gonna say I love how the end of that adventure has multiple options because there that <laughs> is one of the possibilities and you know it, yeah. it also needs to like also leave us here potentially so You're right, right. I, I love that that's kind of so open there's a lot of a lot of agency in there for players and the DM to just go wild. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very good. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. So uh, I'm curious uh, because this has been fantastic. All of these things uh, you've done plenty more working with wizards of the coast lately, right? Yes. I, um, they, they did D and D live virtually for the first time this year. Mm -hmm. And it, it previously has been almost like a small convention where the live plays, they've built like sets um, and have had their brands come and actually have marketplaces and sell things. And it's just a huge celebration. Mm -hmm. But this time it had to be virtual because of COVID. And I was the head writer, head slash only writer for the actual show of it all. And each day was an eight hour <laughs> show day for Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we had a very tiny little uh, insular team that made it all happen. And it was, it was awesome. And I also got to uh, dungeon master for one of the tables as well. So right. it, yeah, it was cool. Nice. Yeah, it was wild because we, we kept talking about what it was going to be like this year just because it would have to be different. You know, we, we've been talking about like, gosh, we got to get to the next one and, you know, go see what it's about. But yeah. then seeing it on the screen was, was very strange. Um, so, yes. uh, so as the, the head writer, I'm going to go with head writer. Yeah, uh, it's typically <laughs> true. Um, I like, yeah, it is, yeah, only, yeah, only writer kind of, yeah, diminishes. But head, head makes me sound like I'm uh, the director of something. <laughs> And maybe yeah. directing other people, yeah. which I wasn't, but we don't have to tell anybody that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we'll keep it between us. Okay. I worked at a small school. I was the only math teacher. I called myself the department head. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. Then I'm in good company. You got to bump that yeah. resume with yeah. something. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's technically true. My, my uh, LinkedIn yes. is so, definitely uh, embellished a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, What's a so there were so many stories being told. Uh, how how did you how were you able to kind of put them together and direct? I guess as the the writer. What's um, there yeah, I mean, like I guess the the easy part of it is D and D live. While it was you know giving a lot of um, oh we raised a lot of money for charity. It's a it's it was mm -hmm. a huge show and and just entertainment value out the wazoo it also technically the whole reason it exists is to announce and introduce um new D, &D products and that includes yeah. the adventure books and other compendiums like fizzman's treasury of dragons but it's also uh you know they partner with so many different companies uh they're partnering with nerds the candy so there was a lot of yeah. um marketing and advertising that were that was a part of my job and then they had three different hosts um so that was but it was b dave walters becca scott and mika burton and they mm -hmm. 
it, it was a lot of writing, some dialogue, some back and forth, um, specifying where you ad lib, specifying, if, especially for the marketing ah. part, you, there, there was like mm -hmm. actual copy that I had to write. So it was, and, and then jokes and, and, and just references and a lot, and yeah. a bunch of skills all, all put into one. And at the end of the day, the host would read what I wrote on the prompter, on the teleprompter. So you kind of have to which I have experience writing for hosts on the prompter. And it's it's a, a fine line between saying the right thing and somehow also trying to make it sound as if they just are knowing this stuff, <laughs> um, which that's sure, also yeah. the ho host job too. But I've, I've done that before <laughs> and it's, um, it's pretty fun to just kind of go in and out of like, oh, uh, I guess infotainment, like here's some information, you have to know this and I should say it the right way because you, it's you know we're marketing and advertising but also mm -hmm. here's a little bit of um like uh i don't know <laughs> color commentary about it and i just felt like such the right person for the job because not only have i done that before for variety shows but i also know a lot about dungeons and dragons and and right. i don't know i i just feel like the whole venn diagram of who i am was i i call it using the whole buffalo and my favorite job besides being a dungeon master on the stream was at the AP bio table, one of the players uh -huh. didn't have their spell book. They had built a wizard, but hadn't selected spells. And the stage manager comes in and is like, Amy, Amy, the wizard doesn't have a spe have spells. Um, is that a problem? Oh, no. And I was like, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> and so, so we like go to her computer that's connected to the printer for the building. And I'm like, okay, let's build a spell book and like get on D&D &D Beyond and what le character level, great, great, great. And I'm just like choosing spells for this wizard. And after it's done and like the, the spell book has been delivered to the wizard, I'm, I just sit back and I'm like, yeah, this is exactly where I meant to be. Like, I, I know a handful of people who uh -huh. can do all of the jobs, but for sure, for sure, I'm in the right place at the right time. And it just felt so good inside. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> I, I love that. That that was uh, one of the ones I watched specifically just because I wanted to see. I mean, there was such a, a mix. That it felt like such a very welcoming table. They had brand new players, and clearly that was a big boon <laughs> to our wizard. Um, but it, yes. it was a great way to kind of teach the game and show the game off at the same time. Like that was a, oh, that was and a great not to table. mention B. Dave Walters at the helm. Like okay, yeah. like give him yeah. everything. So <laughs> yeah, that that was that was delightful. And he he chose to play the game the first ever solo uh like one-off adventure that was ever written for wizard or for D D, and i can't remember the name of it but it was such a cool like throwback to be like oh this is the first the first one-off adventure and he's going to modify it to be 5b it was cool That's wow cool. amazing choose. yeah wow Wow, wow. Well, that's very cool. I think that the, the idea of, of writing for the prompter and things like that, that's not a way I think about D&D, &D, but it's so good. Like, it's so yeah. important to have those details. It's like when I, I go to my, my document and I'm reading all the flavor that I wrote versus the... Totally. You know, like, you guys, thing. I mean, yeah. you, just for the stream, you have <laughs> yeah. your, you know, you want to get the Kickstarters, right? You want to get the info about mm -hmm. Arcadia. Like, you know, not it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to be word perfect, but you just want to give the information and let, let, it's information it's infotainment yeah, yeah. so you want to get yeah, it awesome. right so you've got to take these these notes yeah that's awesome yeah oh no gosh. that's uh, oddly enough that was the the portion i grabbed upon too i was like oh man writing for a teleprompter that seems like a a very interesting niche skill to have like because you have to <laughs> yes. you have to write in a way that you know the the reader can read it and it's going by pretty quickly typically yeah it's going by quickly mm -hmm. and and you have to do things like that you just don't you just wouldn't expect to you know, uh, I guess they call them, okay, they call them throws. We're going to get a little bit into the yeah. weeds, but you Please. throw oh. <laughs> to like um, a video or you throw from segment to segment and you, you, if it's not in the prompter, it's tough to know if the hosts are going to say it right. But if it's in the prompter, the, the other side of the coin is the hosts will say what's in the prompter. So it's, it should be spelled correctly. It's like, it's got to be pretty precise and it's got to match up and it's got to go like, all right, let's throw it over to Mika to, you know, take us into this segment. Okay, thanks, B. Dave. You know, and and you have to write this weird <laughs> like back and forth dialogue that it it does not sound fake, but it is so written, you know. And yeah. and just to be that specific <laughs> uh, oh. is is really I don't know. It's um it takes a mind for detail, and I, I, it's just 
Excel documents are my love language, so I'm totally the person to do that. <laughs> How are we not best friends? That's amazing. Uh, no, I, I spend all, I love Excel. I love Excel, yes. I love spreadsheets. Give me it. Uh, yeah, you know, no, getting into, and, and that, that tends to be the thing that I, I, I enjoy talking about is like the weird in the wigs things that, you know, it's just, just not your typical day at the gaming table, right? And uh, no. right. yeah, so talking about teleprompters is, is right in my way. Also, if you're this. the pun guy, Justin, the one of the things that like when you come out of this video, you have to have like either you say like the host you have to have something for the host to say. Like they can't be like, well that was great every time. So like uh God, I can't even remember. This is gonna I'm gonna rack my brain. But you have something clever, cute, sometimes just plain old punny for them to just say that yeah. gets them out of this um video that's very advertising markety and it's like, but we're back in real life now and I have something to say about it. So it's normally mm -hmm. somewhere between five and ten words. It's Ideally, it's funny, but normally coming from me, it's some version of cute or adorable or funny or annoying or, you know, cringy, whatever. Pick your adjective. But it's something that brings us back into like, oh, we're just humans having a good time now. Team Ooh, it's, it's cringe. Wow. <laughs> yes. Let's make it awkward. Uh, yes. Speaking yes. of heaping helpings. Heaping helpings. <laughs> Look, I know enough about myself. If you didn't want any of this stuff, don't hire me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amazing. Man. That's so good. Wow. Mm -hmm. this is, it's just so cool. I'm just so excited that you are doing all of these amazing things that have so many projects. Uh, oh, thanks, uh, Rich going on right now um it's is there are there any other writers as well like you guys understand and it's it's just cool to be able to i don't know yeah banter with other writers because it's not it's not i think it's like you know uh humans and then people who play DD &D and then dungeon masters and then actual writers of DD &D and like the circle gets really narrow because it's not easy right so yeah, yeah not everyone yeah, does no. it but yeah when talking to other writers it's it's oh, pretty <laughs> delightful and kind of relaxing and yeah. uh luxurious yeah. on, on the topic well, of I on the topic of writing let's 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 touch on that real quick um you sure. know pandemic has been been interesting and a lot of people have been spending a lot of time at home uh, I myself have, 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 have had issues focusing because I'm so stuck inside. Uh, yes. how about you? Like during, during pandemic, you've done a lot of writing. You, you clearly, uh, with Candlekeep and, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the upcoming fizz ban. So, uh, yes. how about you? How do you, how do you find time to focus Ooh. in on, on writing? Yeah, that's a, uh, so it's, it's never one thing and I can, it definitely doesn't, it changes day to day. Um, I'll, there are three things that come to mind. One, deadlines, you know, when you're hired to do something and they're going to give you money, it, it's got to get done. And even for Candlekeep Mysteries, so that happened during the pandemic and it was kind of at the beginning. So they wanted to push the deadline back. And I was like, oh no, you don't like this. I need this out of my head and in your hands. So <laughs> I'm going to just stick to the regular deadline for my sanity. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, deadlines similar to that i have a writers group and we meet every sunday at 11 uh which has gotten a little a little bit lax during pandemic but for the most part we have to turn in um we've always turned in 10 pages of script to each other that again has changed because our jobs have changed and things have changed but there's always yeah. like an appointment we're gonna meet we're gonna talk about what we have written uh sometimes it's a song or something that yeah. i contribute but that changes uh -huh. and then and then the other thing specifically for fizzbin uh this is uh, i think i have it right here yes okay this is my hero's journal oh yes Ooh. because it's like the hero's journey and it uh -huh. takes you it takes you on the quest as if you're the hero in the journey uh, -huh. uh it's pretty great Whoa. so that's how that works but i bullet journaling is something that i i i don't get to uh, nerdy about that but I do where is it I did color I had like a color box fun thing for Fizbin where I would color in uh the amount of quips and for every like five quips I got to color in a box and so oh. that just helped me like I wanted <laughs> yeah. to turn in I don't know how many I wound up turning in 250 or 300 quips and about probably 90 of them are going to be in there if if they didn't you know, just say, uh, Amy's 
screw it, Amy, we're not going to use any of them, um, <laughs> which they, you know, very easily could do. But yeah. uh, they, let's see, oh, I can't find it. But basically, you just color yeah. in a box. And by the end of the session, like I would I have this timer, this hourglass. So I would just try to get as many clips wow. done in that amount of time as possible. Um, but yeah, just, I, I, I do have trouble focusing. So those yeah. are little <laughs> tricks I have. And coloring in boxes is somewhat of a reward. Good enough for me, you know, yeah. I'll take what I can get. Right. I love it. That's <laughs> amazing. That's perfect. Yeah. Especially because that, that yeah. kind of writing specifically isn't, I'm writing a narrative all the way through. And so my I feel the progress because I'm farther in the story, but it's like, I need to generate totally. these kind of standalone things. That's, those are good tricks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad you like yeah, that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Oh, that those, were, those were perfect. Like, I, I live and die by deadlines. I uh, If I didn't have deadlines, <laughs> nothing would ever get done. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree. It's, uh, it's a lifesaver to have deadlines. I don't know how people operate without them or people are like, I'm an artist. I don't need deadlines. And I'm like, I'm an artist and I need deadlines. I, oh, wait, I can. Yeah. I think I can read you one quip that they did use for the marketing. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, okay, bards do have a way of editing and exaggerating. I remember, wait, I'm going to be Frisbane. Bards do have a way of editing and exaggerating. I remember that time as one big, boring, patience trying dilly dalliance. A lot of hurry up and wait. And this is, he's talking about the creation of the world. Oh. Um, so. <laughs> 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 oh wow oh, oh my god, god. That was good. that's great yeah i love it i'm yeah. so excited yeah i i love the character fizzman i'm so excited to see this book and get get the opportunity to read it and it comes out uh mid oh gosh mid-october no 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 i don't oh, I just know i have the to date. look that up it's the, it's the middle of the month fall. yes definitely this um, fall i yeah, I, I don't just... have that memorized. My job's over. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's right, fine. Exactly. I just get to see it. October nineteenth is right. Yeah. So yes. I'll be I'll be reading through it and I'll be very happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, I... But you are right, Rich, that this whole gown and wizard or whatever, it is inspired by Fisman. I was like, Oh, he's got a green yeah. hat. I wanna be the feminine version of that, but also add some like fairy sparkles and uh shaman yeah. moss and stuff like that. So it was inspired nice. definitely by Fisbin. But here we are now. Yeah, you, but you, a good natural bent as well. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're, you're also an accomplished actor. So were you able mm -hmm. to use any of those skills as you were writing Fizban? Like, is, is that something where you, you tried to use some of your acting chops to inhabit that, however you do that? Yeah. What was oh, that man, like? that is awesome. I, you're absolutely right. I never thought about it. But of course, yes, because... I, beyond being an actor, uh, like, yes, acting. And then, and then I also have done sketch comedy and written for mm -hmm. myself as characters. And so there is something about, um, yes, I would read them out loud and then realize, oh, uh, this needs an exclamation on the end. Like, it's like, oh, um, boy, do I love dragons. Uh, yikes. Or like, I, not mm -hmm. that, but like, yeah, I, yeah. You, know, you need this like extra <laughs> like some extra flavor of character that is, you know, it's like someone giving their opinion, which is fine. And then they're like, um, oh no, or, or like they're actually scared, mm -hmm. but you can actually communicate that on the page without having to read it out loud. I guess my, I guess the, when you're writing, hmm, I've done UCB and Groundlings and UCB mm -hmm. is like on the page. It needs to be funny. You need to read it and go, oh, that's a punchline. But in Groundlings, you're playing a character. So even you, you might just write, okay, like your character says, okay. And you could read it. Okay. Or if you're the character, you're going, okay. <laughs> and, and it's like so different, yeah. but there's a mm -hmm. way to communicate the character through actual words as the punchline. And, and you're right. I'm actually good at that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I didn't realize that, but yes, of course yeah. I use acting to be physical. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, very really, cool. I, I, it, it just it was like yeah, as soon as you began acting like this, Ben, I was like, oh yeah, no, I know. Uh, yeah, it, it like, seems I, like I was wondering if you're dancing around the house with your hat on, like reciting <laughs> fizz band. <laughs> I, I definitely, I read them out loud to myself sometimes when it wasn't quite sounding right. And then sometimes mm. I would read them to my boyfriend and, and yeah, it always had to be in, in that voice because yeah. it's just, 
uh, yeah. it doesn't sound right otherwise and then you can you can sense what's missing if you're doing the voice i Absolutely. don't know that's mm -hmm. such a good question i didn't even realize it <laughs> yes i got one yeah. question in that was good because yeah it just yeah. No. as you're talking about it i'm like oh yeah every line of that was dialogue dialogue uh -huh. is something i struggle with as a writer yes, so dialogue. Exactly. <laughs> seeing uh where those skills come from oh gosh you Why know who you does it? I think it's I don't Volo's know. Guide to Monsters. <laughs> is it Volo's? They have, um, it's Volo conversing with someone else. Oh, uh, yeah, Elminster. I can't remember. Yeah, it's, it's oh, in it's, Elminster yes. and Volo going back and forth. Yeah. So yes. Good. Like that was, that, when, so when, when, when that book came out, I was I just marveled at that. I was like, oh, I love these two bickering back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I so, love yeah. it. Yeah. So, just straight. Wow. It's like classic straight man, crazy man, just calling <laughs> things out. Um, yeah. And, and imagining, I, I actually did read a bunch of those, uh, less of Tasha because um, she was so uh, not negative, but like, nah, you know, yeah. and then, but those mm -hmm. two, uh, Volo is, is, delighted and then Elminster kind of cuts him off where it's like all right we're not doing that right now like that kind of stuff <laughs> and so mm -hmm. it, it was just fun to realize like yeah the, I it, Volo's a uh, guide and I don't know who wrote who wrote those two but it was very uh, my stuff was very inspired like oh I can just hypotheticalize or say whatever Bisman would say like I don't have to be married to lore even it was mm -hmm. just like ah, I'm an eldering professor oh I think this you know <laughs> yeah no. wow I, yeah, yeah I, I I love the dialogue in Elminster and, and Volo because essentially 50% of the characters I play are Volo and 50% of the characters <laughs> I play are Elminster <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing serious and studious or wow. goofy yeah right yes <laughs> yeah. yes but not but not like not sense. like purposely goofy but like they are trying to do something but they stumble into goofiness so yeah, yes. no, I love that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, we are reaching, we're getting pretty late into the show. So uh, <laughs> any more questions, Rich, before we, we, we move on to the next section? Well, my biggest one is, uh, is something we can do at the end. So I'm going to hold on to it uh, to right. find out where we find you. I want to find out about future projects as well, but future let's uh, right. dig, into the, let's dig into the present. <laughs> All right. Yes. So we warned you a little bit about this ahead of time. So... <laughs> Uh, this is an exercise in creativity. We are writing a the next big adventure for the Exploration Society. Our main quest giver is Chef Owlberdy. So we'll go ahead and get that up there. Uh, Chef Owl, <laughs> Owl Owlberdy. He is um, he is an owl bear who loves cooking. He yes. sometimes <laughs> is a little cranky. He sometimes is a little uh, goofy. He. Uh, you know, he's sometimes he could be a bumbling professor today. Who knows? But Chef Alberti is sending the adventurers on a task uh, or something. Yeah. Hmm. So what we need to do is figure out what that task is. Okay. Where they're going, and uh, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then get wacky. Then get wacky. <laughs> well, if he is, if this person is a chef. Uh -huh. Um, I, I imagine he wants an ingredient and, and you think maybe this is just a, a fetch quest, right? Like just yeah. the normal fetch quest. And then, right. uh, through the adventure, you determine that there is a twist at the end. So mm -hmm. I think, I think he wants three, three things. And I think they are, he's an Albert, Chef Albert D. So, um, alphabet shaped, alphabet shaped, uh, mint leaves. <laughs> Perfect. He he needs wow. um he needs he needs something to mash. So oh um oh this is gonna be sad, but sentient like uh sentient what's if uh, irises. Oh that's really good. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm steamrolling this, but no, iris the iris the flower but in the in D and D, it's irises like the iris of the eyeball. So the, it's they're just real gnarly and disgusting, um, and they're they're also sentient. So this flower is looking back at you and talking, and he's oh I see actively he's actively <laughs> going to mash them. Um, and I think we're making alphabet soup, just not in the way that that is normally made because yeah. it's D and D. So then he mm -hmm. needs a spice, and that will be it's going to be. We'll just call it because I can't think of anything right now. Uh, 
he needs he needs two rhea plants to to mash them and that will the way that you say two rias is diarrhea uh <laughs> yeah uh, yeah diarrhea plants. excellent yeah. wow oh my gosh this this is sounding like the uh the scariest garden like I, i'm worried about <laughs> walking through this and actually you know raising these plants that stare back or are, do we shape the mint leaves through like a bonsai process or do they grow this way naturally? Like how do we get it's, the whole it's, I think it's, yeah, how, they, how do you get the whole, that's, um, it's magic. So it's, they're uh -huh. magic plants. They're, they're definitely sure. grow, they definitely grow like that, but there are, it's kind of like Scrabble. There are more common ones and you just kind of have to wait around for the X's. It's just, uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's hard, but yeah. you do have to wait. It's like seasonal for the X's, I guess. <laughs> But the E's are and the M's are pretty common. L's are pretty common. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, the, the where wow. this just sounds like a very Feywild Wild adventure. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I, think, I think. so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all made Chef Albert D. So uh, yeah, this, if we're if we're humanizing owlbears, um, then yeah, yeah they're mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All it's right, gonna have to be we in the Feywild. Wild. Off to the Feywild. Wow. Wild. All right. Interesting. So Chef Alberti tests the adventurers to go get an ingredient, and uh, and, and he says, uh, it's going to be this way. They go through the portal. The adventurers go through a portal like they always do. Uh, right here in the Exploration Society, we got a series of portals that just take you where you want to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the way it work. arrive in the <laughs> Feywild to see boom, boom, boom. what's our opening scene. Ooh, That's good, because I was first encounter. Ooh. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, I don't want to do the whole thing. This is a lot of, well, I'm work. just, I'm just thinking cause, cause now I've been thinking about the, the Feywild a lot, right. With the, yeah. the, okay. the wild of the witch light coming out. So, right. Yes. We, we aren't just entering the Feywild. We're entering one of the domains of delight. And so yes. there is, there is like a, a tone to this place that we could create, um, kind of some sense of whimsy, maybe some sense of, um, Yes. Yeah. How do we I think love, this if, place feels? Yeah. I feel I feel like it should, if we're doing alphabet soup and that's a whole thing, I would love this to be okay. This is a oh, deep cut, but maybe you've seen it. Um the you know that it's a it's a train and Tilda Swinton's on it. Yeah. And it's uh, going snow through piercer. Oh snow, snow piercer. piercer. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now we fast forward to the Allison Pill character and she's this like creepy teacher. And I would love it to be creepy kindergarten teacher land. Um, that's the vibe. It's Ooh. just, it's like education through, um, psycho <laughs> psychological damage, I guess. Oh, wow. So maybe this feels like the place that a lot of our children's books come from, right? They're yes, all like, yes. <laughs> authors dream exactly. about this zone. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think yeah, creepy kindergarten. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I think that's the domain. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There okay. we go. I so, love this. <laughs> it's a public, public school system. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. Oh, Rich, I'm so sorry to bring you back. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I got yeah. out. I got out. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, I love it. So, oh, man. So they say they uh, they pop in here, and the first thing they they, they notice, the first thing uh, they notice. Oh, yeah, the first encounters. Is uh, they are on a road uh, made. Okay of uh those weird mats with letters <laughs> shapes and animals yes. on those puzzle mats yeah the puzzle mats yeah <laughs> it's just puzzle mats and you're on this road <laughs> yes and they have okay. to so that they have to um in order to to travel on them they have to like they have to not say anything they have to like you know this oh yeah um, but they're not, but okay. But who's going to attack them if they don't bean bags, bean bag chairs might, if, if they get it wrong or they haven't figured out what the puzzle is yet, we might get some bludgeoning damage from some, uh, bean bag chairs. I like that. Okay. So I, I love the idea that we are, we are now here and there's a strange, the first thing we have to do is solve a puzzle dealing with these pieces. We we've got hall monitors. <laughs> Yeah, these these bean bags <laughs> watching it around the edges. Um, 
Okay, this is a good sense of strangeness. I like it a lot. Um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we no, to, I. We've got this garden that we're we're kind of heading to, but I, I love the idea that they're like, there's a public school over there. There's the towers of another public school. <laughs> they're just yes. they're everywhere. They're they're inside out. There's there's just oh, it's just eerie. Um, I like it. Yes. Okay. Cool. So they have to. So they have to. Yeah. Solve the puzzle of being absolutely silent. I do like the idea of something mm -hmm. humanoid. And my first instinct is for it to be like a hag of some sort. Um, Cause they're in the Feywild, right? Just yeah. hags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. weird, creepy librarians. Um, uh, or just uh, maybe just one, one creepy librarian and everyone's afraid of that creepy librarian. Uh, yeah, right. shuffling down the road. Oh, cool. Oh, you got this. Because maybe, because <laughs> yeah. as, as much as I want there to be have to be silence, it's like, well, now everyone's quiet. Now what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so, right. So we have to right. give them, Got to talk to the librarian. Them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give them a way to talk to someone. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. And uh, is she the domain queen or whatever? Uh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, I like that with... Uh, glasses perched on the end. All right. Um, so yeah. Um, well, yeah, is she... So sometimes whenever we go to these different realms, there is a contact there to help guide the heroes towards their path. Mm -hmm. The librarian could very well be. Like, uh, they, 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 they could take the chance to try to talk to the librarian yeah. or they could attack her, right? So, yeah. so let's see here. So let's do this. Let's go, Tux, talk and uh combat so right if they do this what happens if they talk to her what are some options here talking uh, well, I, well think... I like yeah oh go ahead rich you do it no no i i just wanted to, to go with what you were saying right is is she the domain queen right so this all of the domains of dread are about torturing the leader and i think the domains of delight are to delight mm -hmm. the person who's kind of held there right so is this hag the librarian is the domain based around her and the things that she likes? I think so, right? Delight her and bring her joy. She, she's a hag okay. librarian. There's public schools everywhere. There's quiet right? time okay. while on the road. Um, so yes. combat may not go very well, but yeah. talking, like, she knows everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you're yeah. like talking and to Strahd. Think, yeah. I like the idea of her also being, like, you might think, or the players might think, oh, this is definitely a bad guy. But things are a little backwards in the Feywild, mm -hmm. so definitely a bad guy could read could read differently and all of a sudden she's just like you know she loves the idea oh you know everyone stand in alphabetical order if they do things that are like um organizational then she's smitten also the domain mm -hmm. don't don't the, the fey wild operates on gift giving so if right. if there's any sort of apple with a worm in it that they give her or yes. ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so as as he's leaving, as the uh, uh, players are leaving, Chef uh, Boyard or, or, or Chef Albert D uh, tosses an apple at the party and says, "Here, you'll need this." Yes. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yes, I like it. Oh, and it's it's no, super it's mealy, and there is definitely yeah. a worm in it. Like it's yeah. really uh -huh. they, like they they would be very like, oh, I don't want to eat this, and why do I have this with me? But she would love I it. I love it. Because someone still might. Like, there's this moment in this where someone's like, well, I was hungry, thanks. And then they walk away. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, so her name, I'm going to, let's name her after um, my first, my kindergarten teacher was named uh, Miss Sperry. S-P-E-R-R-Y. Oh, okay. S-P-E-R-R-Y? Yeah, Miss Sperry. I think you have to say Miss Sperry because everyone I think so. I think so. in kindergarten, yeah, is calling people like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, reminds me of Miss Sperry, who is definitely not a witch. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you. So when they talk, they you also need to present the apple. All right. But we yeah. didn't tell them that, right. so they could figure it out on their own. Or, or potentially, you know, in the sense of a bargain or a gift, like you learn something extra if you do that. You know, it's, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eyebrows go up and tells you uh, the secret that you need, or or some something important. Bonus for the apple. We can we can figure. You know, maybe uh, extra information, something to prepare them for what they need to do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, things like that. Yeah. Oh, and also, okay, so I also love, I love the uh, idea of playing with the environment, like mm -hmm. as if maybe um, almost like cherry blossoms, they float through the air, but they are like alphabets. And if someone like arranges them like refrigerator magnets to form simple words, it, it also delights her in, in a way. Right, yeah, because you're you're doing something educational. Of course, Miss Sperry yeah. loves it when people show off that way, right? I almost yeah. love the idea that at the end of this conversation, she's like, and don't forget, class begins in one hour. I'll see you then. Yeah. And like Ooh. all these creatures come to class and you're sitting there with like centaurs and sprites and- <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> that okay, could be fun. And maybe, is... maybe it is like, sorry, go ahead. No, no, keep going, Rich. What if, Your Honor, oh, what, I just... wait, wait, class begins in one hour. Um, what if that's more of a threat, right? Like, what if, yeah, what yeah. if that's that's their timer? Because they don't want to get, they don't want to have to go to class. Uh, right. I mean, I'm going to print out a math test for them anyways, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if they can't find the ingredients in an hour, here's a math test, everybody. Don't be late and make I sure. I love that, though, because that's super evil. It's like, we're down. nice until we're not in the Feywild. So that. Yeah. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. I love it. Right. If you These don't come to class, things... she is going to hunt you down. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that I Drag kind of want this <laughs> Feywild um, domain to be about, since it is kindergarten, is the reason there are so many children who are going to go to this class is because, we talked about this before, but beholders... Um, it, they're all beholderkins, like all of these, like, like kind of messed up centaurs, messed up fairies, messed up hags, mm -hmm. messed up, um, uh, the mushroom people, I can't remember their names, myconids, uh, Myconid, all of yeah. these, yeah, all of these creatures are messed up beholderkins, which the beholders make babies by dreaming about them. And somewhere in this Feywild, wild, there's a beholder asleep, just creating babies um, mm. and weird amalgamations of what they're dreaming of. Other beholders. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and that beholder who's, who's there dreaming is actually the captive of Miss Barry. <laughs> yes, that's, she, she that's loves the relationship I wanted to sort out. Yeah. 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 So yes, she, the beholder. She, she keeps the beholder um, asleep. Yes, and he is having babies non-consensually. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is uh, uh, forced to sleep and dream by Miss Sperry. And he's sleeping in the magical uh, Chef Albert D's uh, garden where yeah. all the oh. things are. Ooh. Yeah. So when you go to find them, because you're rushing away, right? So you don't have to go to class yet. You find yes. like the locked gate, like leading down <laughs> beneath the garden. <laughs> yes, because of course Miss Mary has a garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yes. Maybe even those dreams make the plants even stranger. Like we don't even yeah. know they're made from a beholder, but like that magic is percolating upwards. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Yes. Okay. So there's some cool investigation there. You you end up yes. finding like this gate. You break it open. You get down in the slumbering beholder. Oh my gosh! Ugh. Yeah. Like a finding a beholder right. asleep. I I don't know what the players would do. I really don't. Right. <laughs> I right. know. Yeah. That and and I, it's the fa again. It's a fey wild. So it could. It's very backwards. And they could save a beholder. I'm without. I mean. I'm kind of thinking of maybe I that's do... what they're supposed to be saying, that they, you know, it's 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 a situation in which they are encouraged through everything around them to save this beholder. I, I, I think that's perfect, right? That's yeah. the real mission. The, they, you know, that's the real right. adventure is is dealing with the beholder. Mm -hmm. It's right. not getting these ingredients. The ingredients are just there. It's, no, yes. Know. It starts as a fetch quest, but it turns into... <laughs> there's our twist. It turns into a, be yes, a, a beholder rescue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And he, he needs to probably, you know what? Beholders are like magnificent creatures. So he probably has his own domain of dread that's probably falling by the wayside. Yeah. Or getting eaten by this uh, domain of education, of public mm -hmm. education. Well, right. Well, and then when, yeah. when, when the Beholderkin <laughs> students pass the classes, you know, they have to move on. And so they just get pushed into the prime, you know, prime Ooh, material yeah. plane. And this is oh. so, so there's been a big influx of Beholderkin lately. <laughs> right. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. That's oh gosh. incredible. Um, but how yeah. would one wake up a beholder? 
Right. He's got. Yeah. I think I think this is a good Feywild thing to like have somewhere a um, like a legend or a thing that like if you do this, this will happen, like a true love's kiss or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Yeah. Um, because I think I think it, yeah, the the hag would put something on there to make it fun for her. But like a riddle. Uh, yeah, like a, like a riddle. Oh my gosh. Probably. And of course, where do you keep all the, the books about legends? In the classroom. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you you see like off in the distance that bookshelf right there and you're like, oh no, we've got to get into the class. We've got to grab that book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facing the hall monitors on the way, whatever those might be. <laughs> uh, yeah, in, 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 the, in the beholder, you know, pen, we'll call it, uh, there is a bookshelf uh, with one book missing. And that's their clue. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, on the way there, we talk about, uh, yeah, oh, a Dewey Decimal System puzzle. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> a small slip of paper that has some weird numbers on it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Dewey Decimal oh System gosh. ready. Legend, uh, le uh, lore. Lore. Where would lore be in the Dewey Decimal System? Uh, Nine. I think it's... Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where religion and mythology is. I think it's in the 100s. I'd have to do some research. <laughs> yeah. Look, we, we, we could just tell them, right? So there's like there's a key or there's like access to a key that they would have. Yeah. Also, right. ideally, yeah, they could just, no, we don't want to, yeah. So let's be just, you know, when we actually write this out, we'll have one through 10 of what the things are. And, and then we'll give like lore six and it'll be like, great. Now right. You know. But, uh -huh. but they might have to, there might be a few books without, uh, codes on them and they might have to shelve them appropriately yeah oh right without numbers on them and they might have to you know just yeah. figure out the, and we uh, could make it a little bit confusing because yeah like if if there's some monsters that are actual like uh, empyreans or something that could be mm -hmm. is that a deity or is that a monster yeah. you know that kind of right thing. I like that. I like that. You know, you have to clean up first before you can borrow any books. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> that's great. Um, so the way to wake up the beholder, I, I think it's got to be, I think it's like something I'm trying to think of like just mapping over kindergarten, but I think it's making like something like bringing a smell of pancakes and syrup or or concocting something that that wakes up children right yeah mm -hmm. that otherwise wouldn't like necessarily that. be in this garden you need mm -hmm. maybe you need a like a you know the 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 wall bells in in old schools maybe you need one of you need the sound of one of those wall bells to go off oh and, yeah and, and that's the only way to oh, wake wow. it but you notice when you're inside the the little little holding pen for the beholder you can't hear anything from the outside. So you have to somehow get one in there. Ooh. <laughs> Which yeah. means you have to great. go to the school. You do have to go to the school. I love that. <laughs> that yeah. yeah. And the danger of the actual public school. You just right. can't escape it. Yeah. Because I, I want us to have to deal with that, like creeping around. I think that would be really good. Like trying yeah. to avoid notice, but knowing that in the end, like this, this rescue attempt is going to obviously notify somebody. Um, and there's going to be a, a face off before we can get out of here. Yeah. Cool. I, uh, I guess the main here, I want to fast forward a little bit to the end because now it feels like we're writing towards a goal. Yeah. And I think my goal would be that we have the beholder kind of realize they're a parent, get angry at first, and then get like annoyingly nurturing, you know, like just so um, protective of his babies and just like 
you know, I mean, these are these are their monsters in their own right. But I would love the beholder to be like, who's a who's a good who's a good little Mykonid? Who's a good little Mykonid? You know, like that kind of <laughs> right. Just throw off what you think a beholder actually is. It's not. It's not your mama Xanathar. Let's just say. Yeah, that. and uh, you know, it, it, this is maybe not even final cap. This is wrap. This feels like wrapping up, right? Um, and mm-hmm. uh, who, who's a good little monster? And yes. uh, <laughs> as as the uh, as the the beholder uh, beholder babies uh, its kin uh, its kin uh, the realm starts to shift. Oh wait, I didn't mean that we. Ha- I don't. I didn't mean to jump all the way there. I just wanted to have that as a as oh, yeah. a. Oh yeah. Oh no 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 no. We can no, go, no, we can I, go I, back. I, I think the realm realm starts to shift a little. Uh, to look more like what you would expect of the Feywild. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, so you think it makes some changes, and maybe that's why uh, Miss Sperry is yeah notices things. Maybe it starts coming in. Mm-hmm. It, well, it, it, I was even thinking. Oh yeah, yeah, makes changes, and then then Miss Sperry comes in. Yeah, no, I didn't even think about that. I see. Right. Maybe the, the, the plants are starting to, the dreams have stopped a little bit here. So things are changing. Yeah. So then that's our final encounter, right? Because then Miss Perry comes in and she, she she's, of course, going to attack the players and the Beholder because she's losing her realm. Right. She, it, yeah. She, she needs right. an unconscious Beholder. And yeah, and Miss Perry, Miss Perry uh, brings along her hall monitors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now we can see what a beholder can really do. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, and that's that's one of those very cool fights where yeah, you can have the ally and there's just enough hall monitors that you you occasionally flash to the beholder who's just zapping them and turning them to dust or you know, that thing <laughs> while the heroes yeah. deal with like Miss Fairy and mm-hmm. maybe like one or two of those. Yeah, so yeah. good. All right. That could be fun. This is, a lot of fun. This is crazy. This is, this is a great outline to an adventure, and this is typically about <laughs> to where we get. But let's go ahead and yeah. do the most important part of every adventure. What should we call <laughs> this adventure? <laughs> Y'all, I think it's got to be called Behold... Oh, Recess. I was going to say Behold Her Dreams. <laughs> but that's yeah, yeah, me yeah, being right? narcissistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, wait. I mean, I love this. Beholder yeah. recess. I love that. Beholder recess. But you can spell it beholder. I will say, Beholder Dreams, the title of my album, <laughs> did come. The pun came first. The pun came first. Oh, yeah. I, I love Beholder Dreams of Recess. That's. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's not how you spell recess, is it? No. That is, that is a very, like, seems like a very sci fi style title. <laughs> Yes, yes, this is awesome. Oh, I love it. Well, we we now have our adventure. Behold our dreams of recess. Uh... <laughs> I oh love gosh, it so much. I love it so much. <laughs> if anyone wants to I would play learn it. any more about Beholders, they're in, they're in Volo's guide, and it's crazy. Oh, it's this so wild. all yeah. canon. It really yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Totally canon. This is all now canon. This is all, all now canon. canon. All right. So, <laughs> so good. Oh my good. gosh. All right. Uh, wow. Let's. Uh... Jeez, Justin, you're like a you're a savant typist. This is. I mean, you are the guy who does the hard stuff in a writing partnership. This is great. <laughs> I like, you know you're great. Going, I agree. Boop, 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 dee, 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 whatever, and you're like, yes, this all makes sense. And it's like, oh, well, when you write it, yes, yeah. it does make sense. Yeah, I just dance well, around. That's really it. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, for me, part of the fun is trying to struggle remembering how to spell things because I'm an awful speller. Uh, I know. I gave you diarrhea at the very beginning. Yeah, I was like, well, diarrhea. Like, and then I just I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. We're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's an H in there somewhere, but I don't right. know where. <laughs> we'll spell check yeah, that we'll, later. It's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll guy gats it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, my gosh. Well, Amy, you have been fantastic. You've been a wonderful guest. And uh, before we wrap up, uh, is there where can people find you? How can people find you? How can people support you? Oh, man. So the best place to find me is on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm at Vorpal Sword. I also have a shiny new website that I got through taking 
lasers class, laser campaigns, and it is amyvorpal.com. And I'm so proud of it. If you want to just learn about all the Venn diagram stuff of who I am. And then finally, um, the best way to support me at this moment is to back my Kickstarter for my album, uh, which is definitely going to get made. But the, the next stretch goal that I'm very excited about is getting all the way to 20K so that I can make a music video of one of the songs. And yes. um, another dream of mine is to be mm -hmm. a, an actual director. So I, I've, I've done a bunch of videos, some of them, yeah, I, I just want to have the title director and mm -hmm. uh, that would make me very happy. So uh, getting yeah. there is my next goal and I'll yes. be doing lots of stuff these next 11 days to uh, just, you know, get my name and my album's name out there. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about the video. Uh, I can't wait to see it. I'm just yeah. assuming it's going to happen. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much again for, for joining us. Anytime you want to come on and write weird adventures or uh, yeah, awesome. promote something, <laughs> swing on by. It's a ton of fun. Um, Rich, yeah. that was so clutch, The, the uh, just bringing that knowledge about the domains because it does help you color. I don't know. It helps you color the environment, which is, I don't know, mm -hmm. the, the most important part of, of adventure writing is like, ooh, what is... <laughs> Mm -hmm. What do you pull from for the environment? So that's awesome. Yeah. Oh gosh, I love that we got to pull from some public school stuff. <laughs> <That's really good. laughs> Kindergarten madness. <laughs> oh, it was great. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, thank you so much uh, for just for everything, and I can't wait to keep checking out the Kickstarter. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Um, thank you. I don't thank have to you. say that you're already funded. Everything's yeah, great. Everything's great. Everything's great. <laughs> All yep, right. I'm a happy um, lady. Good, right. good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> We're going to jump on over and wrap it on up. Thank you so much, okay. Amy. All right. You have been uh, wonderful. Uh, Rich, where can we see you in the next upcoming week? Oh, gosh. Just check me out on, uh, on let's see, uh, I was going to say Facebook. Don't look there. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, at rmolina. Um, and uh, you can check out the Academy of Adventures at academyofadventures.com. Um, we're in the middle of our first season right now. Um, I'm very excited for them to get to this cursed town and attempt to break it. That's up next. Um, season two starts, I believe, October 11th, and that's getting into our our creepy season, our, our spooky season. There we go. Spooky Not season. Creepy. Um, the season of the haunted high road. I'm very excited for some haunted forest action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and for me, you can always follow me on Twitch at DJ Pirate Rabbits. I'll be doing a... Uh, another spooky movie here on Wednesday. We're going to watch, uh, oh, I forget. I think we're going to watch The Man Who Laughs Last, uh, a great silent film that The Joker was based on from 1928, I think. No, maybe 1932. I got to oh. look it up. Um, wonderful film, weird film, fantastic film. We're going to watch that while I DJ house music, and we will probably make weird comments, as we always do. Other than that, you can find nice. me on Destiny. Really, that's just where I'm going to be. Oh, yeah. You can find me there. That's yeah, just, just find us on Destiny. <laughs> um, I uh, just wanted to take a quick moment as well to just mention that I'm going to have to learn to say this word that saving throws transitioning. Um, there's a link in the chat to, to Kofi, to coffee, to that one, K-O-F-I. Mm -hmm. um, so get on there, uh, sign up for a membership or a one-time tip um, and help out uh, the folks at Saving Throw make these shows happen. All right. That's all I got. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Make sure to keep your crockpots on warm. We'll see you next time. <laughs>